Welcome back to The Factory. This week we're talking pick and place optimization. This week we did a large run of four channel logic level converters and as I watched it run, I just couldn't help but think that maybe we could make it go a little bit faster. We also introduced the PicoDev color sensor prototype and take it for a spin. Let's get started. Another week and I have another prototype to show you. We've been working on a PicoDev color sensor. This is using the Vemmel 6040 color sensor and there's a high CRI LED on there. That's a high color rendering index LED to illuminate the target and then you can read the reflected color back. I mentioned this in an episode a couple of weeks ago. This is the next revision of the board. Our first one didn't have that LED and it was definitely necessary to get it in there. Here we have the Vemmel 6040. Just above it is that high CRI LED. And to the right is a little N-channel MOSFET driver. So you can enable or disable that LED if you wish through the input. Maybe you don't want to read passive color. Maybe instead you want to read, say, like emitted color. And in that case, you might just want to disable the LED. This is what it looks like powered on. And what do you say we take it for a spin? I have an example code running here. Running this demo script, you can see in the plotter the red, green, and blue contributions. And you can see those in the console as well, along with a identified color category. If I hold this marker to the sensor, we should be able to get that to read as blue, and indeed it does. And if I swap that for a red marker, then we jump to red. And it's quite interesting to see the color contributions change for different colors. I wonder what happens with this rainbow card. If I hold that there, I've got like a, a globit rainbow card. And if I move that around the card, that is quite interesting. So we have red, green, then blue. Then we've got green, red, blue. Green, red, blue, but the blue contribution is much higher. Now reds dip, oh, this is great. That is quite fascinating. <laughs> oh, okay, I could do that all day, but we must continue. In any case, suffice to say, DIY jelly bean sorters are gonna be on the way, no doubt. In other factory news, we did a large assembly run of our four channel logic level converter throughout the week. Each one of these panels takes about 45 minutes to assemble, which to me seems like a long time, but there are about 225 units per panel. Look at that. You can see in this footage that we captured that the gantry makes one movement to place one, two, three, four transistors and then one, two, three, four resistors. It then makes a second movement. This time it only picks up four resistors and places them. This is because when you generate pick and place files, it's quite unusual to generate this whole panel as a single file to be placed. Really, you generate the bill of materials for one of these boards, and then you tell the pick and place software how it's tiled, like how many, how many columns there are, how many rows there are, and the distance between each. And then it just takes that, those placements and offsets them and just stamps them down again and again. This makes it really easy to make these files. You just, you're just working with the bill of materials for a single board, and then the software replicates it. But what this means is you get inefficiencies like this where the machine is only thinking about one board at a time. In that gantry movement, that second gantry movement, four nozzles were unpopulated. You know, if you could make use of more nozzles per movement, you could reduce the total number of gantry movements that it would take to place a large panel like this. If we could make use of those four extra nozzles to start placing components on the next unit along, then we could potentially reduce the amount of time it takes to assemble one of these by a quarter. And you know, when you're talking about 45 minutes, that's kind of a big deal. I mean, sure, maybe you can produce more panels per day, but just for a given number of panels, you can reduce the amount of time you're spending with the machine so that you can go off and do other productive stuff. So counting out the way the machine is currently placing the parts, we have four nozzles configured for the transistors and four nozzles configured for the resistors. So in the first gantry movement, we get one, two, three, four transistors and one, two, three, four resistors. Then there's a second gantry movement 
for one, two, three, four resistors. If we place this whole panel as if it were a single PCB, we could configure the nozzles for three transistors and five resistors to make eight nozzles. And that means in the first uh, gantry movement, we would get one, two, three transistors and one, two, three, four, five resistors. Then in the next gantry movement, we get another one, two, three transistors and one, two, three, four, five resistors. In the same number of gantry movements, we've placed enough parts for one whole unit and one partial unit. And then the pattern just repeats. So those are my preliminary thoughts on this little optimization that could really speed up how long it takes to place a panel like this. There are of course some trade-offs. It does make the pick and place file a lot bigger. Instead of the file just having the bomb for one of these units, every part and location here would have to be represented. So it makes it a little bit trickier to manage in that way. It's also quite likely that the component ordering would have to be either algorithmically or hand tuned to get the parts in the right order to actually make best use of that nozzle configuration. Anyway, it's just a thought. I might pursue it or it might just be put in the someday basket forever. In any case, that's all I have for you on this week's episode of The Factory. If you'd like to see anything closer or if you have any questions, open a thread on the Core Electronics forums. And until next time, thanks for watching.